Welcome to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint from Zero to Hero, Module 4.1, Onboarding Overview. On this video, I will talk about all the different options when performing the onboarding, and then I need to explain a few things in regards to servers 2012, 2016, and 2019. After, I will talk about two different tools you can use to check if the Defender for Endpoint is running and how, to, how you can create an alert just to make sure all the telemetry is working as expected. And then the last one, eventually, if you need some help, I will point you to the right direction when you need to perform any troubleshooting. Anyway, let's dive into it. In order for Defender for Endpoint to be able to manage the devices, the first thing you need to do is to onboard those devices into the portal. To do that, as you can see, there are different options. If for now I'm concentrating on the Microsoft Windows, in this case, Windows uh, workstations like Windows 10, Windows 11, or Windows Server, anything from Server 2012 and newer, there are different methods you can use. If you want to automate, you could uh, inject the onboarding script into the Grow policy. If your devices are already managed via, uh, via Microsoft Intune, yeah, no problem at all. You can create a profile that will onboard those devices and so on. When we are talking about Windows servers and Linux servers, in addition to those options for, for Windows, we can use Microsoft Defender for any, uh, uh, sorry, Microsoft Defender for cloud, and then we can benefit from the uh, automation. By the time those devices, Linux servers and, and Windows servers, they are registered into the Defender for cloud, we can automatically make sure they are auto onboarding into Defender for endpoint. If we are talking about onboarding Mac OS, as you can see, there is, there is a local script we can use again, Microsoft Intune and so on. For Linux servers, there is a different options here, as you can see. And then again, it depends what sort of automation your organization is using at the moment. If you are testing a few, only a few servers, maybe it's a kind of, you know, uh, proof of concept, you can always do that manually using local script. But if you want to um, automate the whole process, again, if your organization is already using an automation like the Ansible files, yeah, you just make sure you add the onboarding package into your uh, Ansible uh, platform. When we are onboarding Android devices, we can do that via Intune. And if you are onboarding iOS, again, Intune or the mobile application manager. And as I quickly said, there is no right or wrong. Just make sure you test a few of them and then uh, kind of decide which one is easier and more suitable for your organization. Um, in order to download the, the package and then the place, I think it's better for me to show, yeah, let me show how we can do that. If I go straight to security as uh, in here, the security.microsoft.com, that's the, the place to go. Uh, quickly, if I go over my, in here, endpoints, uh, assets, if I click on devices, I have already onboarded a few devices. This is a brand new tenant and I'm kind of, you know, building all the configuration from the scratch. For the moment, I have a few devices in here. As you can see, there is a server 2019, another server 2012, server 2016, another server 2016, and so on. They are onboarded. Uh, but okay, how I managed to do the onboarding, the place is the following. Make sure you scroll down up to the second last option in here, settings, click in there. And then from settings, we could be changing, you know, different configuration here. But right now I need to dive into the endpoints. That's a place to go. And then eventually I need to go into the onboarding. And there is the place where I can download pretty much whatever I need in order to get the files to inject into the Grow policy to do the automation, get the files and run as a local script and so on. Again, if I scroll down a little bit in here, yeah, that's the place, onboarding. If you click in here, now just, of course, kind of basic, but make sure you always pick the right option applicable for whatever the OS you are installing. And in this case, if I'm about to onboard Windows 10 and Windows 11, 
and then I need to set now I need to sorry pick what is the deployment method as you can see in here there are a couple of options local script again applicable up to 10 devices if you are onboarding more than 10 and then you should go to a different options like grow policy or you can get the files the the supporting files for Microsoft endpoint configuration manager and so on and then when you set the option in here okay let me see uh, let me let, let's say I just want to do a quick uh, test and onboard one or two Windows 10 or Windows 11 yeah just make sure select the right option and then here is the place to download that package just uh, just clicking there and then I will be able to get now a zip file and uh, by the time I extract that file I will see a CMD or a kind of batch file to do the onboarding okay that's you know simple like that now there are some differences in here if I go there and okay let's say I need to onboard a server 2012 or 2016 if I click in there there is a, a small uh, there is a small uh, difference first same story I can pick a local script a grow policy or so on but the difference is the following as you can see there are two parts the onboarding script that is just a, a CMD file but here is a special package on the upcoming slide I will tell you the differences between server 2012 2016 and 2019 in this case make sure you download both and then you need to build the automation for both first install the MSI file and then do the onboarding if I go to server a new version server 2019 or 2022 if I click in there as you can see you know if I pick the local script or grow policy as you can see there is no installation package because the EDR and the AV are already built in into the OS itself and then it's much easier the only thing I need to do is to download the onboarding script again could run that manually or I could inject into grow policy or so on to do the automation and yeah I will talk about that a little bit later but when you do the onboarding usually it takes a few minutes you know, can be based on my experience can be from five minutes up to you know 30 minutes in order for the the devices to be presented into the portal if you are wondering if all the telemetry you know everything the the whole communication is working as expected a really nice option for you to do is just copy and paste this script is not a malicious thing just copy and paste this script and then run on those on those uh, onboarded devices after a few minutes again can be 10 minutes can be 20 the uh, basically a new alert will be will be created into the portal and that will be a nice how could i say a nice proof all the 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 configuration the onboarding is working fine the telemetry is uh, working nice if something big happens an alert is able to be created and so on okay that's a, a nice thing to do uh, you know you don't need to do in every single device you are onboarding but if you are let's say in the early stage on your project i would advise to run uh, at least on the POC servers on you know, the proof of concepts in at least on each of the different versions server 2012 Windows 11 Windows 10 just as a piece of mind to make sure everything is kind of you know on track anyway that's just a, a, a place for you to go please remember security.microsoft.com and then from here you do you download the components and then later you do the onboarding okay if I go back to my quick presentation now very important if you are dealing with uh, servers windows servers in this case there is a small a small or big i could say difference in here uh, as you can see when we are dealing with server 2012 uh, r2 basically the av and the edr are not built in into the operation uh, into the operating system this is why we need to download that additional package is a msi install the uh, kind of you know sort of client and then do the onboarding in the av and edr service actually comes from the fr from that uh, client we need to install in every single server 
when we are talking about server 2016 we still need to install that msi file that you know the md client why because the edr is not built in into the operation operating system on server 2016 the kind of good news is the av is built in you don't need to kind of you know install anything and when we do the the onboarding after doing the the msi installation the server will have the av and the edr the av comes from a built-in let's say solution and the edr is uh, kind of injected via the client and finally as you can see in here when you are about to onboard server 2019 or anything newer the good news is the edr service in the AV service, the antivirus is fully built in and then it makes the onboarding much simpler, much faster because the only thing you need to do is to run uh, onboarding script and job done. Based on my experience, I've been getting a little bit of headache in some servers 2016 and 2012. In another video, I will explain there is a custom script we can use to kind of overcome some of the challenges. And again, based on my experience so far, I haven't been getting any kind of any headache at all, I would say, with Server 2019. By the time, if you have a Server 2019, the AV is already running, is fully updated. By the time you run the onboarding script, it should work straight away. And after a few minutes, you will see the server fully populated into the portal and kind of job done. A bit of more information in here is pretty much whatever I already uh, told you. When working with server 2012 and 2016, there are two components I, as I already uh, presented. The installation package, which I could call as a kind of you know, MD client, and then the onboarding script. It is just a, a batch file to do the onboarding. When we are dealing with servers 2019 or anything newer, the good news is, yeah, we don't need this package in here. We just need to download and onboard the servers via script. Okay, that's pretty much it. And then, of course, if you are wondering how you, you, you could do the onboarding, as I already kind of presented on the first slide, different methods. If you are just testing a few servers, just run that manually. Otherwise, you can inject those scripts into the group policy. If you are using Configuration Manager, you can do the onboarding via Configuration Manager, VDI script, and as I quickly told you before, only available for servers, not for Windows 11 and Windows 10 uh, at the moment, you know, is we can do the auto onboarding using Microsoft Defender for the cloud. And if you are looking to automate the, the, the package, the actually here's the package is md4ws.msi again you know whatever is the deployment tool you are using or if you want to run that manually in a kind of quiet mode just make sure you run the msi exec slash uh, i and then md4ws.msi slash quiet and then that will install straight away without prompting you to provide any additional any additional information Okay, and then uh, when you do the onboarding, especially for servers 2012, you could always double check on all the versions, but especially for servers 2012, because they don't have the AV built in, and then the big question is, okay, how can I know if the Defender service is up and running on that device? And then the option is SC query sense and that will of course you can always go to the service uh, you know graphic user interface but a quick way is to do that let me just show you here if i jump to my virtual machine and just copy and paste you know just uh, sorry for the laziness if i just copy and paste there and then uh, run that command yeah i can see now in here the status is the the service is running okay if it's not running you will see as a stopped or you know any other any other information but if it's running and then means yeah you are you are sorted okay that's a quick tool for you as i said especially for server 2012 to make sure the onboarding is working and most important the defender service is running and as quickly as i told before if you run, you don't need to do for every single device, but if you want to, to test the, the communication and the telemetry, and especially if the alerts 
are you know will be populated into the portal when a threat you know uh, hits those devices or those servers and then just copy and paste from the portal this command that will after a few minutes when you run after you know 10 minutes 20 minutes you will see a full alert in there and that's the proof you need to make sure the system is running as expected okay and hopefully you don't need that but eventually if you know some things are not running uh, well and then you need to troubleshoot this is the page let me just quickly click in there it's a long page there are a lot of information uh, in here as you can see you can you know troubleshoot problems regarding grow policy other problems if you are doing the onboarding via configuration manager and you know how to deploy the script as you can see is a long list in here based on my own experience especially you know for big enterprises the firewall the, the configuration is very tight the servers and the users they don't have the freedom you know to to surf to any website and then initially what's happened is when the devices they try to reach the microsoft data centers they are not allowed because the firewall or the proxy is blocking that and then um, you know the, the onboarding might not work well or eventually onboarding works but the telemetry the telemetry doesn't work well and then of course you need to go there troubleshoot the communication you can use that the microsoft defender for endpoint client analyzer please check my additional videos how you can run that tool in order to double check and make sure the devices they can reach all the urls from microsoft to do the the whole communication but anyway if you are a bit stuck in order when doing the onboarding yeah i would advise that's the place you should go to do the the first kind of you know assessment and this video is just a quick overview about your onboarding uh, please find the additional videos from the description below where i show the step by step how to do the onboarding anyway this is what i wanted to share in this video onboarding overview if you enjoyed this video please give a quick like subscribe my channel follow me on linkedin and get ready for the next module thanks for watching